Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, uh, we continue our discussion based on testing of hypothesis. Okay, I have a question right in front of you and it's from 2073. Okay, in the last video what we learned is single mean testing. And you learned that it's divided into three parts. One is large sample, another is small, but the samples are taken from normal distribution. And the third one, small samples, but we don't know uh, whether the samples come from normal distribution or some other distribution. And in today's video, we will focus on single proportion. And it's very easy to identify proportion. People will be talking like... Um, 10 out of 15 people like coffee, 5 out of 100 people like um, sandwich or etc etc. So uh, please read that question, define critical value. I hope you know that we have discussed about critical value in the last videos. Okay, the, a manufacturer claimed that at least 95 percentage so read that word very carefully at least 95 percentage of the water pumps supplied to the ABC company are confirmed to specification however the product manager at ABC company was not satisfied and what did he do yeah he took some samples 250 samples and he found that 228 are as per specification. Can you conclude that the production manager is right to doubt? So look at this, um, there is a company and here is our manager. So the company claims at least 95 percentage of their pumps are uh, confirmed to some sort of specification. But Mr. Manager is suspicious. So he thinks no, it is not greater than or equal to 95, it should be less than or equal to 95 percentage. Okay, now tell me what is step number one? Step number one is setting up hypothesis and first you will write the null hypothesis and remember I told you proportion means they will be talking like 7 out of 10, 52 out of 104, 10 out of 23. So here the man uh, the manufacturer has claimed 95 out of 100 that is 95 percentage. So look at this H0 will be the proportion is at least at least 95 percentage that is 0 0.95 okay and beneath that we write the alternative hypothesis so look at this the product manager was not satisfied and that clearly means that he is suspicious uh, about the manufacturer's claim that means he thinks it is less than 0.95 and what should we write on the bracket is it two tailed or left tailed or right tailed yeah left tailed okay now step number two step number two means we define the level of significance okay the level of significance is given here alpha equal to 0 0.01 Wait a minute, I have a question. Should we take alpha by 2? No. When should we take alpha by 2? Only if the test is a two-tailed test. Okay, now let's move on. Step number 3. Now look at this. Um, unlike single mean testing, single proportion is very easy. There is only one formula, set calculated. And that is P cap minus P naught, the whole divided by the standard error, 
that is P naught Q naught by N. Now P cap means in some books instead of P cap they use P S also. It means sample proportion. Look at this if you read the question you will understand. The manager, the manager was suspicious right. The manager was not satisfied. So what he did is he took 250 water pumps and he did some sort of testing and he found that 228 are according to the specification. So that is the sample proportion and that is 228 the whole divided by 250. And P naught means the right hand side of H naught and Q naught is the usual notation in proportion uh, that is 1 minus P naught. So Q naught is 0 0.05. Finally our N. So look at this the sample proportion. So N is equal to 250. Anyway use the formula. So we will complete step number 3. Set calculated is equal to substitute. So we have P cap P naught, Q naught and then. So I wanted to substitute all these things. Anyway, I got the answer minus 2.757. So put it in a box because you'll be searching for this value a little bit later. Okay, now step number four. Can anyone of you tell me what is step number four? Exactly, tabulated value. And remember, tabulated value depends on what we calculated. If we calculate chi-square, then we tabulate chi-square. If we calculate t, then we tabulate t. And what did we calculate here? Said. So I had to write said tabulated. And every tabulated value has its own format. The format of Z is Z alpha or alpha by 2 depending on two tailed or one tailed test. And since we are not bothered about plus or minus, we take uh, the modulus 0 0.01. Alpha is given. I th hope you noticed at the last alpha is given. Now are you ready with the tables? Let's find. Okay, I have underlined that 0 0.01 and I'm sure that you can see that it's between this 0 0.01. So here, so the value is minus 2.3 and the possible candidates are 2 and 3. So 2, 5, that will be good. So this value is 2.325. Now immediately draw the graph. And since it is left tailed, mark on the left side minus 2.325. And reject here, accept here. Okay. And step number 5, the easiest step among all the 5 steps. So take the calculated value and Look at the graph. Okay, my conclusion is very easy. Reject H0. And reject H0 means accept H1. And accept H1 means, yeah, the manager seems to be correct. So we write, we are 99% confident that the manager has the right to suspect the manufacturer's claim. Let's check out one more question. Yeah, I'll read the question for you. It's also from the past paper, but uh, I didn't have the question paper print out. So I just typed the question. So in 1990, 5.8% job applicants who were tested for drugs failed the test. Um, so I think this is from US um, when they apply for job 
they check whether the people have any history of drugs or not so one advice stay away from drugs yeah okay so 5.8 percentage job applicants fail the test now they are asking um, to test the claim that the failure rate is now lower and for that what did they do they took samples they took 1520 job applicants and found that only 58 out of 1520 failed the test for drugs so they are asking us to check whether the failure rate is lower okay so as usual let's try step number one so step number one null hypothesis and clearly it is proportion because i told you earlier they're talking in terms of one out of five ten out of twenty etc etc yeah so h naught the proportion is equal to 5.8 percentage so they are sure about it in 1990 it was 5.8 percentage and h1 is they're they are trying to prove that or they are questioning us does this sample data show that the proportion of drug users is less than 5.8 percentage now or not anyway it is left tailed okay so step number two if you read the question carefully you'll see that step number two here at 0 0.05 per yeah, significance level so i'm going to write alpha equal to 0 0.05 should I take alpha by 2? No. What is the reason? Yeah, it's not a two-tailed test. Okay, so step number 3. So the step number 3 is very easy. In the last problem I told you, P cap minus P naught. What is P naught? The right-hand side of H naught. Root under P naught Q naught by N so p naught is here so p naught is 5.8 out of 100 remember per cent per cent so uh, cent stands for 100 that means they are measuring out of 100 so it is basically 5.8 out of 100 so q naught is equal to 1 minus p naught and that you can find and p cap p cap or ps that stands for the sample proportion and the sample proportion is given to be yeah 58 by 1520 you plug in all these values you get set calculated is equal to minus 3.309 I got this value cross check this value okay now step number four come on tell me what's step number four yeah tabulated and I'll put modulus and the significance level is 0 0.05 it's given in the question I underlined it with yellow and you can use your tables yeah 0 0.05 is good news because 0 0.05 is a standard value whenever star is given you just follow the arrow and you'll get the answer very fast 0 0.05 isn't it 0 0.05 yeah 1.645 so the value is 1.645 now immediately you draw the graph since it is left tailed mark on the left side reject accept and here you mark minus 1.645 why did i put minus yeah it's on the left hand side and compare with this value okay the conclusion is reject h naught that means accept h1 and that's good news that's good news compared to 1990 
according to this data the drug users have seems to be reduced okay now let's go for question number three the third question i'll just give some hint and i'm sure you'll be able to do this yourself okay so shall we start yeah it is claimed that 19 out of 25 ioe students use medicines without prescription of a doctor i guess this data is true because uh, most of us do this we just go to the nearest clinic and get medicines whenever we have fever or cold okay to test this claim 200 ioe students were questioned randomly and wow shockingly 182 answered as oh my so p cap is equal to 182 out of 200 check whether this sample proportion supports the claim so what is the claim okay so our h naught is the proportion is equal to 19 out of 25 and the question is h1 whether p is did they ask you to prove that um, it is less than or greater than no they just asked whether this is true or false that means we have to check whether it is equal to 19 by 25 or not equal to 19 by 25 so this is a two-tailed test okay great finally so in step number two we write alpha is equal to five percentage so alpha by two equal to 2.5 percentage why did you take alpha by two because it's a two-tailed test and step number three in step number three i'll write the formula you can simplify that by yourself p naught by root under p naught q naught by n so n equal to 200 because they have questioned 200 students and p sample will be 182 by 200 you can check it here 182 answered yes shockingly 182 answered yes so p cap is 182 out of 200 and p naught what is p naught the right side of h naught the right hand side of h naught that is 19 by 25 so q naught is 1 minus p naught that will be mm, 6 by 25 so substitute anyway i got the answer 4.966 and you can try the rest by yourself so i'll wind up this video right now and in the next video we will learn about two mean testing i'll repeat in the next video we will learn about two mean testing so till then my friends bye